My name is Sven, and uh, today I'm going to talk about the Migrate API in Drupal 8 core. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a freelance Drupal developer. Um, I help uh, Drupal users getting together in Belgium. And I've been contributing to Migrate in core uh, for the last few months. And you can also find me on Drupal.org, Twitter, OK, so um, today I'm going to talk about Migrate in Drupal 8 core. And here's an outline of, um, what I'll, of the things I'll try to cover in this presentation today. Um, I'm going to be going over the functionality that Migrate uh, in core provides um, and some other extra functionality that has not made it into Drupal 8 core but lives in, uh, in the Drupal 8 contrib ecosystem. Um, and I'll explain how a migration works in Drupal 8, um, how to get from Drupal 6 to, uh, and Drupal 7, uh, how to move your content from the previous versions into Drupal 8 or from an external system, uh, proprietary CMS or something like that. Um, I might skip the advanced topics if, uh, if I'm short on time, but you'll be able to find the slides online uh, afterwards. OK, so first we're going to check how the Migrate module actually became part of Drupal core um, and how everything got started. Um, in Drupal 7, uh, you might have used the Migrate module. It was a module mainly created by Mike Ryan um, that allowed for uh, robust migrations um, from all kinds of systems or data sources into Drupal uh, 7 in that case. Um, and there was also a specific uh, module, Drupal to Drupal data migration, migrate D2D, which helped you migrate from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, uh, or from Drupal 7 to Drupal 7, if necessary. Um, in Drupal 8, it was um, decided to put the Migrate API into Drupal 8 core around DrupalCon Prague. Um, the main purpose to do that was to um, provide a better upgrade path, because in the future, uh, in the past, you would uh, upgrade your Drupal versions by running update.php and just pray that everything would go well. And you could only do it once. Uh, well, you could start over, I guess. But um, the main purpose to put it in Drupal 8 core is to have a more robust system, a more flexible system. Um, and also to be able to migrate directly from Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 with completely skipping Drupal 7, um, because Drupal 6 will be end of life soon. So um, it's important that uh, Drupal 6 sites get, in, get towards Drupal 8 as quickly as possible. Um, all right, so what's the current status? Drupal 8 was released uh, a few weeks ago. And if you have installed it already, I hope you did, the Migrate and Migrate Drupal modules are now in core. They are um, marked ex as experimental, so um, they work, but they haven't been really tested in the wild yet. There haven't been a lot of migrations performed towards Drupal 8. Um, so that's why they're experimental also. They're not yet fully f uh, feature complete. Um, but what is contained in the Migrate and Migrate Drupal modules in Drupal 8, um, the basic API functionality, um, which lived in the Migrate contrib module in Drupal 7, but now it's in Drupal 8 core and migration paths from Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. Um, Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migration is pretty stable and feature complete, at least uh, for the core parts, but I'll get onto that. And the Drupal 7 migration scripts that are in core provide um, the basic stuff, the nodes, terms, comments, blocks, things like that. Uh, actually, even more. but. Uh, some pieces are still missing and are being worked on. 
hopefully for the Drupal 8.1 release or releases in between. Um, but that's Drupal 8 core. There's also um, uh, contract modules. Um, so in Drupal 8 core, there is not yet a UI to perform the migration, and there uh, are no drush commands. So what you will need to do is install the migrate upgrade module, uh, most likely if you want to um, have UI and Drush support to actually perform the migrations. It's un still unsure when this UI and uh, Drush uh, commands will become part of the, the main branch, so when the UI will be in Drupal 8 core and when the Drush commands will be in Drush core. But um, yeah, that's, that depends on uh, who works on it and uh, things like that. Um, so Drupal 8 migrating core, what is actually migrated? The purpose is to migrate uh, all the, or to provide a migrate path for all the modules that ship with Drupal 8 core, such as, um, well, all the, all the Drupal 8 modules. Um, th this also means that um, we have provided migrate paths from modules that were in Contrup in Drupal 6 or 7, like CCK, image cache, and things like that. So if you have your Drupal 6 site with CCK content types defined, image cache presets, things like that, there is a pretty good upgrade path to Drupal 8. You won't experience a lot of problems. But there are still some uh, big holes. Uh, views, there is no, upgrade, uh, no um, migrate support for views yet. And multilingual content um, is being worked on, but is still, yeah, at very early stages. Um, and also worth mentioning that contrib modules will need to provide their own migration. So if you have, um, I don't know, a, a specific uh, Drupal field type module in Drupal 7, let's say a geolocation, you and you create a Drupal 8 version as the contrib maintainer, you would uh, have to provide the migrate scripts because they are not yet created. So your users would, yeah, if you upgrade a Drupal 7 site with a geo field, then uh, you will just get an error, I can't uh, migrate this field. Okay. So that's a quick overview of the status um, of Migrate. Now I'll dive a little bit deeper into uh, the modules that are provided, both in uh, Core and Contrib. So as I said, in Core, we have the Migrate and the Migrate Drupal module. Migrate provides the basic API logic to migrate content, both from older Drupal versions and from external systems, WordPress, your own CMS, uh, whatever, if you write the script for it. And the Migrate Drupal module is aimed specifically to migrate from older Drupal versions into Drupal 8. And Core also provides um, plugin classes, migrate templates for all the modules that are in Core um, inside of each Core modules directory. So you can check them out, see what the scripts look like, and use it for your own contrib modules as an inspiration. Okay, like I mentioned, um, there are, uh, there is still quite a few, uh, quite a bit of functionality in the contrib space. The most important modules you would need are the Drupal upgrade module, which provides a UI, if you like that, which tells you which um, things will get updated. It has a nice uh, progress bar, things like that. And it also provides Drush commands for the people who prefer command line um, stuff. And there's the Migrate Tools module. This is a more uh, general purpose module which allows you to um, perform migration tasks, uh, do rollbacks, things like that. Not specifically tied to, uh, to Drupal to Drupal migrations, but just general migration tools. And also provides uh, extra UI components. Um, 
All right, and then there's a bunch of contrib modules um, that provide source plugins. So as I will explain later on, there is a, a pipeline in Migrate. Um, and the first thing you need to do is um, get the data from a specific source. You, there are contrib modules which can get them from CSV, XML, JSON, things like that. This is useful if you import from uh, or migrate from a, a proprietary system or some other system. And then there's also the Migrate Plus module, which provides also some extra functionality, such as migration groups, which allows you to group migrations together uh, and have uh, common settings for them and uh, things like that. The plan is to also get this into Drupal, but Drupal core, but still uh, very much work in progress. And important, there's a migrate example module in there in the migrate plus module as a sub module. And it's very use useful for, um, yeah, if you want to go write your own migration scripts, you can use it as a good documentation source. Okay, so now that I've explained a bit what migrate modules are available in Drupal 8, um, I'll get a bit deeper into the, some of the concepts um, provided by the migrate system. Um, if you've used migrate in Drupal 7 before, it might be uh, quite familiar. Um, so migration configuration. Um, this is the, the core functionality. It defines how, how you uh, migrate a specific piece of data from your source into Drupal 8. Um, so each module can define one or more migration uh, configuration entities, which is how things get stored in, uh, in Drupal 8 as standard configuration entities. Um, there are two ways to define those. Um, the, the, the standard Drupal 8 way, you create a, um, a YAML file in your config install or config optional directory. Um, and then the migration uh, configuration entity will be created. This is um, useful for one-off custom migrations. If you write your own custom module and your own custom migration, you would do it like this. Um, in Drupal 8 core, it's a bit different. Migrations of, uh, of data, data stuff gets, um, gets defined in a migration template, which is uh, actually the same. It's just the same YAML file as, uh, as you would put in your config install directory, but it gets some extra processing um, to be more dynamic. Um, this is useful for general purpose migrations where you don't know where the, yeah, you don't know the exact path of the migration because every Drupal 6 site is different, every Drupal 7 site is different. So this, um, these migration templates allow to migrate from a, a wide variety of sources of, um, yeah, site specific configuration into Drupal 8. Um, so basically, what you need to remember is if you use a migration template, there's some extra processing. And if you write uh, for Drupal core or Drupal contrib, you would also n uh, use migration templates. Um, so I'll get into the specifics of the syntax um, next. So here's a, an example of a, a YAML file um, to migrate Drupal 6 nodes to Drupal 8. We'll get into more details uh, about the syntax um, later on. And this is another screenshot example of a, um, a migration template. Um, no, of a general configuration entity um, in an example contrib module. So the syntax is uh, pretty much the same. It's just in another directory structure and gets processed in a slightly different way. Um, so now that we know where these migration templates get stored, um, let's see what happens when you actually run a migration. Um, 
So like I said, each migration template that is defined takes care of a of the for uh, takes care of the migration of a specific uh, piece of data. Can be an entity, uh, can be specific entities, specific configuration variables, things like that. Um, and basically, it's quite simple. The execution of a migration, you uh, load the appropriate uh, migration config entities, and then they and then the system uh, moves through a the migrate pipeline, which consists of three, par three parts. First, um, we get the source. We get the source data. This is defined in source plugins. Then we process the data, defined in process plugins. Um, so we prepare it for import into the destination, which is the third part of the pipeline, to save the data in Drupal 8. I'll get into uh, more details about each of those three uh, in the next slide. <coughs> okay, some other concepts that are available in Drupal 8 um, core by through the migrate module. Um, mapping tables, you will know these from Drupal 7 migrate. Um, so basically, these keep track of the IDs in your uh, in your source and the appropriate ID in your Drupal 8 destination site, which allows you to run migrations multiple times. And if your source data has changed, um, it will update it, it in your Drupal 8 installation. Or um, if new content is added in your source, then things will get uh, get added afterwards if you rerun the migration. And also important to know that if content gets deleted from the source, it will remain in the destination, so it will not be deleted. A uh, second concept um, this, that is not in Drupal 8 core, but uh, can be useful, uh, I already talked about it, um, actually, is the migration groups. This is in the Migrate Plus module. Uh, us useful tool when you write your own custom migrations. Um, but I already explained the details about that. Uh, a third concept is stops. Um, you might also be familiar with that um, from Drupal 7 migrate module. So basically, this functionality um, allows you to have placeholder destination objects. It's connected with um, the mapping uh, system. Um, So basically, when you have uh, relations between objects, the the stops get well. If one object is migrated and it relates to another one, then um, migrate will create a, a yeah a placeholder item for it for the second uh, item. So in a later stage, it will get imported, and then uh, the two full objects are connected together. Um, yeah. So basically, the ID is already reserved um, for the stub object. In a later stage, it gets filled by a uh, real data. Okay. Um, maybe it's a bit theoretical at this point. Um, so uh, I made a quick video of uh, how a, a simple basic migration would work from Drupal 6 to a, a freshly installed Drupal 8 website. And um, so all the migration configuration that is appropriate for my, from my Drupal 6 website um, will get into my Drupal 8 site. Okay, let's see if this works. bit annoying because I can't see the video. Okay, so we have a uh, fresh Drupal 8 site with just one content type and just one user. Just a basic uh, Drupal 8 install. And then we have uh, 
a Drupal 6 set uh, website with some uh, with the story content type, some uh, some basic uh, fields, taxonomy terms. As you can see here, there are two content types with a few extra fields. And the taxonomy stuff. We have two users. So now I'm going to run my uh, migration drush command, drush migrate up upgrade, and in a few seconds, everything gets migrated to. Drupal 8. So these are the different uh, migration configuration entities that uh, get called and the migration pipeline gets executed. And as you can see, my Drupal 8 site now contains the, the nodes, the taxonomy terms. The content type has been migrated with all the fields. And my users were also migrated. So of course, your own website migration will be a bit, a bit more uh, complicated than this, but it's uh, just to prove the, the basic uh, workflow. OK. So now I'll dive a little bit deeper into um, how the migrate pipeline works uh, behind the scenes. Um, so it's a bit more technical. Um, yeah, so like a, as a small recap, um, we know where the migration template, well, the migration uh, configuration gets stored, um, depending on whether it's a one-off migration or a reusable migration. Um, so basically, you create a YAML file, like uh, you will do a lot in Drupal 8. Um, it contains some identification data, an ID, a label, uh, migration tags, um, and optionally migration groups. And then it provides um, source, process, and destination configuration. And, option, and uh, also, perhaps, dependencies, um, which can be required or optional. So um, let's say you're migrating a user profile fields. Then, obviously, you would have a required dependency on the uh, user migration, because you can't add the profile fields without having the users. So here's an example of a migration YAML file. This one uh, migrates Drupal 6 files to Drupal 8. In red, I have marked the source, process, and destination declarations. Um, so these define each step of the migration pipeline. And uh, now I'll get a bit deeper into that. Um, so how these things work, um, they are all Drupal plugins that you can use, um, and and um, yeah, so you write your YAML file, which uh, which um, yeah describes how the plugin should work. The plugins is a Drupal a standard Drupal eight concept, so you should be familiar with it. Um, and like I said, the source plugins um, are aimed to retrieve source data uh, unprocessed from the source. The process plugins prepare and manipulate the data to make it ready for importing Drupal 8. And the destination plugin saves it into the Drupal 8 targets, such as uh, um, content entities, configuration entities, things like that. OK, so I already touched this a bit. Um, there are a few types of source plugins available. There's the 
Drupal SQL based class, which uh, is, avail is available to um, if you want to write your own source plugin. Um, so th this class will retrieve data from uh, a Drupal database. So it has some specific functionality to, to connect to Drupal. There's also the SQL based uh, source class, which is just for regular SQL databases. And there's a uh, there's uh, sources for uh, other types of uh, formats as well, such as CSV, XML, things like that. Um, so basically, the source plugin will connect to the data source and iterate over each source row and returns all the fields uh, that are um, that you want to migrate and pr and uh, push those to the next step of the pipeline into the process plugin. Um, so, the process configuration will describe um, the flow of manipulations that the data will go through um, before it gets uh, assigned to the destination field. Um, in this example, we are just using the get uh, process plugin. It's not um, explicitly defined, but it, this is the default. Uh, process plugin, which will just take a source field, pass it on to the destination field, and actually do no processing. So, um, in this case, there will the site name variable from your Drupal 6 site will be mapped to the um, name destination field in Drupal 8. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, So um, there can be only one source plugin and only one destination plugin for, uh, to migrate your uh, data object or configuration. Um, can be only one defined in the YAML file, but there can be multiple process plugins um, because the data might be yeah might need uh, more processing. Uh, and these get executed uh, in order, and the data gets pushed through. Um, so in this example, um, we will get the D6 source field from our uh, from our source plugin, and we pass the raw data, the raw source data through the first plugin name plugin, which is not an actual plugin, of course. Um, and once that first plugin has processed the data, uh, it passes it on to the second plugin, which also processes it. And afterwards, uh, the manipulated data gets assigned to the destination field, in this case, uh, D8 underscore target. Um, so this is how you define your uh, yeah, the process of how to move, like for example, a, a specific field type from um, the source to the destination. OK, so now uh, let's check which kind of plugins are uh, process plugins are available in Drupal 8 by default. You can, of course, write your own if necessary. Um, so I already used the, uh, showed the, the get plugin. There's also the default value process plugin, um, which is pretty straightforward. It sets a fixed default value um, in case there is no other value uh, provided. Uh, in this example, the the lang code destination field um, will get a default value of u and d uh, when there is no value in the for the language defined uh, in the source. Another type of proce uh, process plugin is a static map, um, which basically provides a static mapping between the source and destination uh, values. So it checks the source value, see if it's in the map, and assigns it the appropriate destination um, value. So in this case, if our um, source uh, view mode field um, contains the value of 1, then the destination field mode um, 
will be assigned the value preview because that's in the static mapping. Um, some other examples, there's a concat process plugin. Um, this will concatenate an array of source properties uh, into a single destination. Um, so in this particular example, um, the Drupal 8 field ID will get a, a value based on the concatenation of the Drupal 7 source fields, team, module, and delta, uh, concatenated together with an underscore between them. Um, then we have a more complex uh, process, migra uh, process uh, plugin, migration. Um, this one is used. Um, yeah, this one uses data from another data migration that was performed earlier in the process um, to keep things consistent between data objects. It's uh, useful to use this. Um, so. Um, in this example, we have the uh, yeah we have a, a vocabulary ID. Uh, let's say it, in our Drupal six side, it has the ID of uh, one to three. Um, then the Drupal seven taxonomy vocabulary migration will get run and assign it uh, um, a new ID, for example, four five six in Drupal eight. Um, then the migration plugin will make sure that. All references to vocabulary ID one to three will be mapped to um, the new target ID four five six. In case you are migrating the taxonomy terms, for example. And of course, there are lots more process plugins available. This is just uh, a few examples to show how it works. You can check uh, the link in the slides and. Um, yeah, check out which ones are available, or you can write your own process plugins if your data needs a very specific manipulation. Um, all right, and then um, we have covered uh, source plugins and process plugins, and there are destination plugins. Um, so basically, once we have the process data, we want to store it somewhere in Drupal 8, and we can define where to store it. Um, the destination can be a, a Drupal 8 entity. Uh, in the first example, you see we will, uh, yeah, we will just create a user entity. It can also be a, a configuration entity, like in the second example. Or you can create your custom destination plugin in case uh, you store data in a specific way in your Drupal 8 site that is not uh, not covered by Drupal 8 core. But to write your own plugins, that uh, yeah, that is covered in the advanced section of my uh, slide deck. But I might not be able to get to that. Okay, so um, a quick recap what we have learned so far. Um, so in Drupal 8 core and contrib modules can specify migration configuration files to move their data from, um, from uh, Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Or you can write your own uh, migration configuration if you uh, want to import uh, data from an, ex uh, an external so source. Um, and these configuration files basically describe how to move the data from the source to the destination and how to process it along the way. Um, and you should use a bunch of these modules that I uh, mentioned, such as the migrate upgrade module to uh, make your life a bit easier uh, when performing the migrations. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Okay, I guess I still have uh, a bit of time. So I can uh, quickly show some uh, information about how to write your own plugins. Basically, if you have written Drupal 8 plugins already, they should be uh, quite familiar. And to write your own source plugin, you just uh, put it in the in your uh, module name, source, plugin, migrate, source folder, give it a appropriate name, and then um, you would probably extend the source base class, such as the one uh, listed here. Um, so you basically extend those, and then uh, and then you're good to go. Um, yeah, so if you would write a migration um, source plugin to uh, migrate views, then you would create your uh, uh, yeah, your own source plugin and uh, probably extend the, the Drupal SQL base plugin, get all the data from the views database tables that is appropriate, and uh, that data would then be moved on to the process plugins. Um, so in your source plugin, you would uh, provide a few functions uh, that are appropriate. The query function, which would, um, in the case of uh, SQL base, of course, would get the data from the, the source. And the fields uh, function would define which fields um, are actually retrieved from the source and will be used further on in the in the migration process. So here's an example. Um, this is a um, a source plugin for Drupal 6 files. Um, yeah. So you can see it extends the Drupal SQL base to get the data from uh, your Drupal 6 database. It has some annotations. Um, to define it as a migrate source plugin. And it has a query function to retrieve the, the data from the database. Um, and in the screenshot, we define the fields that are, uh, that will be retrieved from the source. Um, pretty much the same principle to write uh, process plugins. It's also a plugin. Um, you put it in the appropriate place in your module structure, and you extend the process plugin base class, and you're good to go. You would overwrite the public function transform, which would um, get the raw data that is retrieved from the source. You do some stuff with it, you return it, and then it moves on to the destination. Uh, here's an example of a process plugin. Uh, this is one is specifically for Drupal 6 image cache actions. Um, this overrides the transform method, uh, does some alteration to the source data, and uh, yeah, prepares it for Drupal 8 to be moved into a Drupal 8 uh, config entity then. And lastly, the same principle, destination plugins. Um, there you extend the destination base class, which is pretty logical. Um, and to create specific Drupal entities, there are some helper classes you can extend, such as entity content base or en entity config base. Um, And you implement the function import to import the data into Drupal 8. Um, yeah, this slide I already covered pretty much. OK, next, let's see how you can help. Um, because if you're going to be moving uh, or migrating your Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 site to Drupal 8, you might encounter some problems, so um, it would be useful if you can uh, 
know how to help and uh, make life of your fellow Drupal users a bit easier. Um, which help is still needed for, for migrating core? First and foremost, test the upgrade path. Um, because right now there haven't been, a, yeah, not a lot of Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 sites have been migrated to Drupal 8. So the code works in theory. We have lots of tests. We have lots of, yeah, um, test use cases. But the real life sites also will need to be tested in the wild. Um, there are a few links for documentation uh, on how to actually uh, perform the migration. And you would report your uh, findings in the Drupal issue queue if you get uh, weird errors or things like that. Um, and then hopefully this will get fixed. Or you can provide patches, of course. Um, there's also still quite some work to be done uh, UI-wise in case you're not a, a developer. Um, the plan is to get some sort of UI into Drupal 8.1. But there's still a lot of work needed there. So if you are able to help there, that would be awesome. Um, and if you maintain uh, contrib modules and you are planning on creating a Drupal 8 version or you're working on one, um, make sure to write migration templates to move your data from Drupal 6 and 7 to Drupal 8. Um, so your, the users of your module will have a hopefully seamless upgrade path. And you should check out the IRC channel, Drupal Migrate, to uh, report your findings or uh, discuss things or get information. OK, then to close off some, uh, some links that you might find useful. Um, the documentation you can find on uh, Drupal.org um, is listed there. So we have the API docs. We have the general information how to move from Drupal 6, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. Um, be sure to check out the migrate example module in case you want to get your hands dirty and start coding. And uh, check out some of these uh, blog posts, um, especially the blog. Uh, of Mike Ryan contains uh, very useful information. Um, he created a blog post uh, a few days ago uh, that explains the whole Migrate ecosystem in Drupal 8, so uh, very useful information there. OK, that's it, basically. I hope it was a bit uh, enlightening or clear. Um, so yeah, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Yes. Um, yes, probably there is a, yeah, there is a module, I don't know the name, but there are two contract modules created now to upgrade from Drupal 5 to Drupal 8 and from Drupal 8 to Drupal 8. At least they are, I think they are created, I guess it's just a, a placeholder name right now, not a lot of code. Um, but yeah, I guess the, the concept would be the same. Um, Unless there's an easier way, if you don't really need the whole processing uh, system, then. But I wouldn't know how to uh, approach it. Uh, yeah. So probably still needs some work to uh, to get that achieved, but there are some vague plans at least to do that. Any other questions? Um, that's a tricky one. In Drup Drupal 6 migration, normally it's uh, the password is rehashed for Drupal 8. From Drupal 7, I think there is still some issue with the passwords. Um, I encountered it in my test, but I didn't work on that uh, specifically. I think it's still an open issue um, for Drupal 7. Uh, you should check the issue clue queue uh, to see if there's any update on that. Um, but basically, how I think it works is that there is some, uh, yeah, some system that that is in place when the Drupal 8 user is created to uh, 
override the Drupal 8 default password management and do some stuff to, to be able to maintain the, the password logic. But I'm not totally familiar with uh, how it works uh, in full detail. Uh, but check the issue queue for uh, more details. For the process plugins or uh, okay. Um, yeah, so basically each time you run the drush migrate upgrade command, it um, it gets all the the migration con configuration and it um, yeah it gets the source data um, and basically through the mapping tables it checks whether this content was already migrated or not. So based on IDs, of course your source would need a, a unique identifying ID if you have no. Uh, Unique identifying uh, identifying IDs, then you have a bit of a problem. But in case that's there, then it just keeps track of. I already migrated user one, two, three, four, but five and six are new in my source now, so I'm um, yeah, I'm re -import I'm importing them, or, or yeah, I'm importing user five and six, and I'm updating user three, and the other ones remain uh, unchanged. Um, so that's the the main idea. There was another question there. No, okay. Any other uh, questions? Yes. Um. So to. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, on a periodic basis. Um, yeah, it would be a good idea to to use uh, the migrate system. You you could do that in Drupal seven uh, like that. So uh, you could do it as well in uh, Drupal eight. Of course, Feeds has a uh, a bit of an easier UI for site builders in the Drupal seven uh, ecosystem. I don't know if there's any plans to port Feeds to Drupal eight, but um, okay, yeah. But basically, you could run the migrate upgrade uh, script on a cron job and have it yeah, have it migrating in the in the background. Uh, yeah, probably. For the yeah, migrate system, you you need to write some JAML files and things like that. So it's a bit more complex to uh, for a non-developer. Okay, over there. What? To generate to generate IDs or uh, oh yeah um, yes um, normally the IDs stay the same um, at least that's the plan. Uh, from Drupal 6 and Drupal 6, 7 migrations, I, I think in most cases the IDs will uh, will remain the same. Um, yeah, I should look into more detail, but from all the tests I've run, the IDs uh, stay pretty much the same if it's if it's a fresh install. Um, Um, well, I haven't <laughs> migrated a, a real Drupal 7 site uh, yet, but um, yeah, I guess it, it really depends on which modules are uh, are used. If you have uh, 100 contrib modules, then which define all sorts of uh, of data and configuration, then it might be a bit of a challenge to get everything one on one moved to Drupal 8. Um, but it also depends on what yeah what your aim is if you i mean the main purpose should be to move the content over and and some configuration uh, and ba and usually in your Drupal 8 site you will do some rethinking anyway you will have to rewrite your team anyway so 
it, it's not going to be a one-click uh, migration, obviously. Um, but if your content is not too complex and doesn't have a lot of exotic fields, then the migration should be pretty straightforward. Um, time estimation. Oh, I don't know. Depends how, how good. Uh, yeah, I have no clue. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a week. Or, uh, I don't know. Yeah, really depends, but anything else? No? Okay, thanks a lot.